Welcome back everyone, it is me, Matmus. Hope you're having a great day today. We are discussing bombers. Big old heavy duty stealth bombers. And as you can see by this beautiful, sleek behemoth, we're discussing the B-2 Spirit Tactical Bomber. And what a beautiful aircraft it is. Now we all know of the bigger, chunkier boys of the United States Air Force with the B-1 and B-52 bombers, but when it comes to stealth technology in a bomber program, the B-2 takes the biscuit. It is an incredible piece of Air Force technology that has been strewn with different kinds of stealth principles and technologies. However, I am today not going to focus too primarily on the history of how it came to be a stealth bomber and more of its overview and uh, broad aspect of what this aircraft can actually do. We all have seen these bombers, I'm sure, at some point during our time if you know military equipment. And I have to say that it is one of the most gorgeous looking planes I've ever seen in my entire life. Almost an alien aircraft when you look at it. Its configuration really is quite unique. And the fact that it is basically a flying wing, and that's exactly what it is. The way that it defines stealth technology has been very, very interesting, and I've been doing a lot of research on it. But as I said, there's just too much to talk about to bring you the history of stealth technology of this aircraft. So we're just going to give you a little bit of an overview of exactly what it came to be and where it came from. So of course, its little brothers, or maybe bigger brothers, the B-1 and the B-52, really defined a huge capability for the United States Air Force in delivering massive payloads of bombs to environments that are long, long ways away. And that was key. They needed tactical nuclear and conventional bombers to be able to strike targets throughout the Cold War. However, these bombers were quite easily seen in the radar perspective, and they needed to find something that could be tactically engaging of targets without being seen from radar or SAM signatures. And in the Cold War, the Russians were doing quite a lot to try and counter this. Their radar and SAM systems have always been quite renowned at being extremely good at tracking aircraft today. And of course, technology is spinning out of control when it comes to stealth and radar today. Hence, that will probably be a video for another day. But the big boys like the B-52 were just very easy to shoot down and were not capable of engaging more secret or tactical locations than what the B-2 could. And hence why the requirement of it was needed by the United States Air Force. For 10 years, from 1979 to 1989, the development of the B-2 was kept very secret. Inside that dark and blackened world of secrecy, thousands of people worked there, wondering and creating a stealth bomber unlike anything the aerospace world had ever seen. Engineers had been thinking about how to counter airborne tracking radars practically since its invention. During World War II, British engineers theorized about creating a plasma field around an aircraft to obscure its radar return. If they could find a material with the right electrical properties, it could disrupt normal radar return at certain frequencies. The B-2, however, emerged from a top-secret 1970s research plan into the very low observable technologies. Body and wing surfaces blended together smoothly to deflect radar. Engines were buried in its wing to conceal the fans and cut exhaust signatures, and the radar-absorbent coatings added even more camouflage. Redundant computers managed all functions, and to the point of which if the computers were just turned off for even a slight second, the aircraft would go into complete problems. Designed as a nuclear bomber initially for strike in the Soviet Union, the B-2 was redesigned for conventional war when the Soviet threat faded in 1980. The B-2 Spirit entered the United States Air Force Service in 1993 as the world's first stealth, quote, bomber. This long-range, four-engine, subsonic Northrop aircraft was a flying wing in every sense of the word, with no fuselage or tail at all. It draws its stealthiness from extremely low radar, acoustic, infrared, and visual signatures, plus its advanced avionics. These, in combination, thwarted most detection and tracking systems that might have allowed a foe to detect missiles or interceptors against it. The B-2 was publicly displayed on November 22, 1988, when it was rolled out of its hangar at Air Force Plant 42, Palmdale, California. Its first flight was July 17, 1989. The B-2 Confined Test Force Air Flight Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base, California, is responsible for all the flight testing and the engineering, manufacturing, and development of the aircraft, and the B-2s in general. Because of the B-2's extremely high cost, the US cut production from a planned 132 of these aircraft to only 21. The B-2 made its first combat debut in March 24th, 1999 in Operation Allied Force. Two B-2s after 16 hour flights from Whitman Air Force Base each dropped 16 GPS aided bombs on Serb targets scoring 32 direct hits. In October 2001, six B-2s opened the war in Afghanistan. 
or six flu sorties lasting more than 40 hours to hit Al-Qaeda and Taliban targets. The B-2s made huge contributions in Iraq in 2003 and in Libya in 2011. The bomber can still deliver nuclear weapons today if required and let's hope it never does. This is primarily the main focus for the United States Air Force when using this bomber. It's designed as a tactical strike aircraft, unlike the B-52 and B-1s, which are still tactical and can deliver nuclear weapons, but in terms of engagements from a secret or more resistant to SAM uh, engagements, these aircrafts are the one they're going to pick. Northrop Grumman Corporation is the United States Air Force's prime contract of the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, which is one of the most survivable aircraft in the world and is a key component of the nation's long-range strike arsenal. The B-2 is the only aircraft that combines stealth, long-range, large payload and precision weapons delivery in one single platform. Its unique capabilities allow it to penetrate an enemy's most sophisticated defences and hold at risk their most valued and heavily defended targets. However, technology is progressing so quickly with radar and stealth technology that the B-2 slowly but surely is becoming somewhat obsolete against the more advanced anti-aircraft weapon systems. The B-2 meets the Air Force's requirement for the long-range, lethal and survivable systems to project air power anywhere in the world. It can fly 6,000 nautical miles unrefueled and 10,000 nautical miles with just one air refueling, giving it the ability to fly to any point on the globe within hours. The B-2 fleet currently consists of around 20 aircraft, 19 of which are based at Whiteman Air Force Base, home of the 509th Bomb Wing. One aircraft is also assigned to the flight testing base at Edwards Air Force Base, California, to validate software and weapon system upgrades when they come. One aircraft, the Spirit of Kansas, unfortunately was lost in February 2008 in a crash that occurred while the aircraft was attempting to take off from Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. The B-2 Spirit Bomber is a flying wing aircraft with a two-pilot crew. The multi-role aircraft can be configured for delivery of conventional or nuclear weapons with the in-flight refueling which can reach targets anywhere in the world. However, its primary focus is more precision-guided weapon systems instead of the more conventional dumb bombs. The aircraft is using a powered four F-118 GE 100 turbofan engines which produce a huge amount of power. It has twin side-by-side -side weapon bays capable of carrying a total of approximately 44,000 pounds of weapons and the B-2's low observable characteristics provide a very low radar cross-section as well as reduced electromagnetic, infrared visual and acoustic signatures in general. For single integrated operational plan missions, the B-2 can carry and deliver B-61 and B-83 type nuclear weapons. The principal conventional weapon is the near-precision 2,000 pound Global Positioning System Guided GBU-31 JDAM or JDAM, Joint Direct Attack Munition, with a Mark 84 General Purpose Warhead or a BLU-109 Penetrator Warhead for bunker busting. Additional conventional weapons include the GBU-37 GPS Guided 4,700 pound penetration weapon, limited inventory for a B-2 which is a very unique weapon for this aircraft, the Mark 82 500 pound general purpose bomb, the Mark 84 2000 general purpose bomb, the CBU 87, 89 and 97 cluster bombs which are nasty bits of equipment when they're launched, and the M117 750 pound general purpose bomb. The Mark 62 which is a 500 pound CMI can also be used along with the AGM 154 joint standoff weapon which is currently being integrated and tested on the B2 platform as well. The B-2 does have a crew of two pilots, a pilot in the left seat and a mission commander in the right, compared to the B-1B's crew of four and the B-52's crew of five. The B-2's low observability is derived from a combination of reduced infrared and shaping of the aircraft. The aircraft itself being in the wing configuration actually bounces most radar signatures off the wing platform. However, it has many other technologies that we are still trying to understand today in the way in which this aircraft is designed. There's actually some really interesting and fascinating books made about this aircraft which I'm actually looking at trying to find myself to read because the aircraft itself is extremely unique and I want to learn more about how the stealth of this aircraft came to be and I can tell you this much, it's probably got an absolute ton of stuff that we still to this day will never know about. The aircraft does have special coatings and the flying wing design contributes to the main effectiveness of its stealthiness, however when the radar signatures do hit this aircraft, the coatings are somewhat supposed to bounce or reflect back most of those waves when they hit it. 
Now, I'm not a stealth, you know, professional. I know very little about stealth. It's a very highly secretive, um, you know, world when it comes to military application. But in terms of radar signature, you know, most people, I know when they comment on my videos, they're like, hey, Matt, it's not that complicated. This is what happens. This is what it does. Now, as I said, I'm going to openly admit, I really have no idea how technology works like that. I am not, you know, a scientist and I don't know technology that well. I, I wish I could. I wish I had the brain power to, to comprehend how this kind of technology works. But I think even those who think they know that this is how stealth technology works, a specific application like the B-2 bomber and they think they know everything, I'm sure many of the things that we think we know, especially today, aren't even as accurate as we think. Things are not going to be sold to the public or told to the public in any way because that's just the way it is. Now the aircraft does have some disadvantages though. One of the biggest ones is its lesser stability in landing and takeoff and this is definitely something that has been mentioned many times when designing this kind of aircraft being just a flying wing is that it doesn't have the same contributions to actually getting off the ground as many others that do have tail wings and you know the characteristics of a fighter say or a larger bomber with you know more traditional engines unlike this one. It is also quite hard to maneuver in the air which respectively reduces the capacity of the withstanding sudden atmospheric changes such as turbulence. When this aircraft has been put through flutter tests, those big old wings, or it being one gigantic wing, has given it some problems in its history and its development. And they got by it, you know, they fixed it, but it hasn't been a smooth road getting there. A lot of money, and I mean a lot of money, has been put into making sure that this aircraft performs and does what it needs to do. It has not been a smooth road, to say the least, to get it where it needs to be. It's a very heavy aircraft too, and although, you know, it's designed to carry heavy weights, it is inherently very difficult to get off the ground in terms of its weight. Therefore, those engines are working extremely hard, and the service intervals on these larger engines are a lot more frequent than some of the other bombers out there. As per advantages and disadvantages of the B-2 Spirit, it's raised up to the level of which the United States Air Force has gained the strategic decision, though, to commission them until 2040, which is a very long time folks it's it really is when you think about it that's going to be another 20 years of service which to me is fantastic you know i think this bomber is doing a fantastic job it looks gorgeous and i just like to see you know aircraft like this stay in service we've already seen the f117 nighthawk going out of service you know it's not being used anymore i myself will make a video of that video in the near future i promise you of that because it's a really cool aircraft too involved with stealth technology and all that sort of stuff but it's really interesting to see that the United States Air Force is investing further you know, development into this aircraft into the future. There are going to be upgrades of this aircraft, including of the B-21 bomber, which, uh, you know, there's a lot of different controversial comments coming out about what they're going to do in terms of the replacement for this bomber in the future. Because you've got to remember, these aircraft are not designed within a couple of years. It takes many years to develop, you know, aircraft that are actually going to take over this role of being this strategic stealth application bomber. The amount of time it took just to develop this aircraft, you can definitely tell what's going to happen with the next one, especially with sort of the political environments that are out there today. It's not as simple. Just take a look at the F-35 and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, the aircrafts in terms of actually doing missions, uh, today they are used primarily for conventional bombing. Of course, we don't have nuclear capability that we require. But the fact of the matter is that they're being used in situations where really um, they don't need to have this huge stealth signature because there's no threat to them in most of the environments they're being sent to. However, the battle space is ever-changing and the situations are ever-changing in which the United States Air Force needs to apply these kind of bombers to. And that's not saying that just because it's uh, not being used in stealth application or requirement for, you know, anti-SAM deterrence, uh, that it's never going to be ever again. I can clearly see this aircraft being put into environments in the future, especially within the next 20 years, where it needs to overcome high threat SAM environments or radar uh, detectable environments. And let's hope that its technology that it hosts today is still applicable in the next 20 years. I have to admit, I'm a little doubtful um, for the reason that, you know, technology and, you know, SAM and surface to air missiles and anti-aircraft uh, you know missiles and radar systems that accompany them are getting just as sophisticated as the aircraft that are trying to counter them so i don't really see this aircraft being able to you know withstand radar detection in the next 20 years without having some major upgrades or some sort of 
change of some kind, but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Now in terms of its own radar and defenses, the B2 carries a Lockheed Martin radar warning receiver and a Northrop Grumman defensive aid system, which uses the Lockheed Martin AN APR-50 defensive management system. In terms of its own radar, the Raytheon AN-APQ-181 Covert Strike Radar operates at a J-band, or KU-band, is a multiple purpose radar with terrain following and terrain avoidance modes. Testing at Edwards Air Force Base has demonstrated reliable terrain following at altitudes down to 200 feet. Although if I was a pilot of one of these beautiful aircraft, I certainly wouldn't want to be flying at a 200 feet. Now the engines themselves are extremely powerful, internally mounted in the body of the wing themselves. They have an exhaust temperature control system to minimize the thermal signature and damage the wing itself considering it's actually pushing over the back edge. The engines are rated at extremely high performance and high subsonic speeds and a maximum gross takeoff weight of 336,500 pounds. The in-flight refueling gear is installed in the top center line of the aircraft behind the cockpit which allows the pilot to see the incoming rod at some point, but eventually quite difficult to actually see and maneuver onto position, which is guided upon the refueling tanker itself. For navigation, the B2's navigation suite includes a Rockwell Collins TCN250 Tactical Air Navigation System, or TACAN, and a VIR-130 Alpha Instrument Landing System. The communications equipment is supplied by Rockwell Collins also, a Milstar military strategic and tactical relay satellite communication system is installed in all the Block 30 aircraft. The aircraft have also been upgraded with the Link 16 communications link. You're probably wondering why is there so much focus on communications. Remember folks, this is a tactical strike aircraft designed to potentially launch nuclear weapons. If there was a launch code sent to this aircraft to actually engage a launch, then this has to be of the most accurate and quick timing to allow them to launch at the appropriate time with the correct signal and authorization from the big old boss behind the chair. Seeing these aircraft fly around and land really does remind me of how much engineering and scientific development has been placed into these aircraft. These bombers that you see right now are actually landing in my home country of England, and they just look absolutely gorgeous. Even the sound of them, those big heavy-duty engines being able to lift that much weight, they are really, really impressive. And say what you want about stealth technology, I'm sure many of you are very triggered and upset right now in me even discussing stealth technology, because you're probably saying stealth is not a thing anymore, technology's taking it over, these bombers are redundant, so on and so forth. You know, and that's, you know, your own say, I'm not going to you know, fight you against that. Maybe you're right, maybe you're not. But just the grand scheme of these bombers and what's been put into them in terms of advancement from, you know, simple stealth technology to an insane amount of stealth technology, to me is really freaking impressive. Its capability of being able to launch such massive payloads too, and at the same time not being detected is pretty darn impressive also. So that is it for today on our military aviation video of the B-2 Spirit. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about it. If you want to know more, I'm sure you're going to be able to look and research your own ways of finding what's going on with this aircraft in terms of stealth. But if you did enjoy and you want to see future videos from me, please hit that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming videos I make in the future. If you want to check out my Discord and come hang out and chat with me, the link is in the description below. And thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon with any donations you've been making. I cannot express how much I appreciate that. It really does help the channel out a lot. So thank you so much to you who have been interested in and have been donating towards my Patreon. If you wish to, it is in the description box below as well. Thank you again, everyone, and have an absolutely outstanding day. All the best, and bye-bye.